Hi again, and welcome back to the Learn to Code by Writing Space Invaders course. In the last lesson, number 13, we looked at how we were going to store and represent our alien data in our software. And we'd come across the idea of a two-dimensional array. And we got as far as writing the code that was going to initialize this array and put alien objects into each of the cells in our two-dimensional grid. In this lesson, we're going to look at how we can put those aliens on the screen and actually write our alien drawing code. So let's get straight into it by jumping into Take 80. As usual then, to begin with, we're going to just get our code all prepared. So I'm going to load my last lesson's code in, so loading lesson 13 in. And I'm gonna save that as lesson 14 again, and then come in and change this to 14 and, and save it again. So as this lesson is going to be about putting the Space Invaders on the screen, we'd better start drawing some aliens then. So let's jump across into our sprite editor. And we can see that at the moment we've got our main spaceship. And I think we, we did say that there was a possibility of maybe having different ships in, in different levels. Um, but let's now look at putting in our aliens. So we'll put them into a, a new row down here. So I'm clicking on here and I've got my, my alien in uh, space number 16. So really what we want to do at the moment, um, we're just going to draw one alien because we will need to space our sprites out in a specific order when we come to animator aliens. So for the moment, just let's just create a, a single alien. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm gonna draw the alien which you've been seeing in all of the, um, the video work so far, which is looking like that. And then all the way across here, all the way across here. But again, you, you draw whatever alien you want to, uh, and just make it your own. So I'm drawing it in like that, and then we have a couple of eyes here and here. So we have our alien, and he's in sprite number 16. So let's go back over to our code. And let's have a think about how we're going to actually draw these aliens on the screen. So if we go back to our full alien grid, we'll see that the actual alien sprites are spaced out at regular spacing. So if we zoom in a bit on that and have a look at exactly what's going on, we can see that there is a set distance horizontally and vertically between each alien sprite. Again, taking the top left corner as the actual position of that sprite. When we draw our aliens, we're going to have to include multiples of these spacing values to make sure that each alien is drawn in the correct position. So if we look at the horizontal spacing, we know that each alien is in a specific column number. So if we look at column number one, we can see that we don't need to do any spacing. That, that, that top left corner alien will be at position zero, zero. But if we move across by one alien, then we're going to have to move him across by one horizontal spacing value. So the alien in column two needs to be moved over by one spacing. And then if we look at the alien in column three, that one needs to be moved over by two spacing values. So we can actually build up a formula to tell us that the alien in any specific column needs to be moved over by that column number minus one horizontal spacings. And we can then look at the row spacing, and that follows exactly the same formula, where we now need to do the row number minus one times the vertical spacing. So now we know how we're going to code up the position of the aliens. Let's, let's put that into our program. So we've already created some of our alien variables here. So let's create our our spacing variables. So let's create cre alien horizontal spacing variable. And let's set that, we, we know that a sprite is eight pixels wide. So let's set it to one and a half sprites at 12 pixels. Uh, let's, um, it's not hot spacing, it's horizontal spacing. And alien vertical 
spacing. We'll set that to 12 as well. And again, because we're putting them in here as variables, then we can obviously just adjust these and our software should then cope with that. Now let's just take out that little sp spelling error there as well. So let's think about where this will actually go in our code. So at the moment we have our initialize aliens function. And that's the one that actually puts them into the rows and columns in our aliens array. And if we look at the moment then, when it starts it off, it's putting each alien at position 0, 0 on the screen. So they'll all be stacked up on top of each other in that top corner. So this is really where we want to do our initialization and set them all out into that grid. So let's add in some proper values then for our x and y coordinates for each alien. So we're going to use the top um, left hand corner of the alien grid at 0, 0 and we're going to then build out from there. So we know that our x position then is going to be our column number which is given by uh, one of our for loop variables, column. So it's going to be column, take away 1 and then multiply it by our alien horizontal spacing. And then our y, which is the row version, is going to be our row, take away 1, times alien vertical spacing. And that should then initialize our aliens and set up their positions to give them the right starting position on the screen. So we've got the aliens initialized. We now need to actually draw them on the screen. So let's do that next then. So we'll need to create our draw aliens function. So let's create that at the bottom of our, our listing after our init aliens function. So draw aliens. It doesn't take any parameters. And then if we put in our end statement so we know where that is. So inside our draw aliens function, we're going to need to step through every single alien and draw it on the screen. And we know that at the moment, the sprite we're going to use is sprite number 16. So this is going to be a little test for yourselves then to see if you can do this. So remember, when we did our init aliens function up here, we used nested for loops. So one for loop counted up all the rows. One for loop counted up within each row the columns. And then that gave us the idea of aliens, brackets row, brackets column, actually accesses that individual alien. So we're going to do something obviously very similar in here. And don't forget then that our sprite command, so the command to actually draw the sprite on the screen, is our spr command. So you have to put in the sprite number. And again, I'm just giving you notes here. You'll have to work out what these things are. Well, again, that last is going to be 16 for this alien. It then needs to be the x position and the y position of that sprite. So, have a go at doing the draw aliens function. And I'll give you a countdown for five seconds in here where you can pause the video and then we'll have a look and see if we can get that all working. So, best of luck and see you in a few seconds. So hopefully you've had a go at creating this function, but let's run through it now um, to see um, how we put it together. If you didn't manage it, don't, don't worry. Remember, we're still just learning, so just keep trying and we'll get there in the end. So we know that we need to do our two for loops. So we're going to have our first for loop is going to do our rows, and that's going to count from one to this um, alien rows variable. And that will then do step us through each of the rows in our alien 
um, array. So that's going to be our rows. Okay. We then need within that to do our columns. So we have our four column equals one equals one to alien alien columns do. And then of course we need to put in the end of that for loop. And this is our columns loop. And then inside that then we need to draw our sprite on the screen. So we're going to create our sprite. It's going to be at the moment sprite number 16, which is the alien we've just drawn. And then we need to make sure we put it in the right position. So we know our aliens array holds every single alien. We know then that our row counter tells us which row we're working with. And then our column counter tells us which column we're working with. <clears throat> and that will then identify a single alien. We then need to pick up its position within that object. Let me just drop down to the lower font size here. Okay, so, so this aliens row column gives us a single alien. So we're now looking at an alien object. We're then using our dot notation to pick up the position object within that single alien and then pick out the X value. <coughs> Pardon me. And we then want to do the same for its Y value. So let me just copy that and paste it in there and our alien Y position. <coughs> and we should now have our draw function. So stepping through each row, within each row stepping through each column, drawing a sprite then on the screen at the position set by that specific alien, picking it out by row and column, looking at then its position dot x and position dot y. So that should work for us. The only thing we need to do now is to actually call that function. So if we come back up here <coughs> to our main tick function, we'll know that we do our initialization so that we know that the initializing the aliens takes place within that initialize game function. Our updating takes place there, but we haven't yet done our updating of our aliens. We then draw our player bullet, draw our player ship. So naturally then we will do our draw aliens function in there. So let's see if we can get that to work then. So I'm going to hit control R and see what happens. And there we have our aliens, but of course we're not yet shooting them. But we now have them drawn on the screen. So if you've got yours working, that's brilliant. If not, you'll need to work through your code, run your program, have a look at the error values and see if you can figure out what's going wrong. Um, usually it's just typing error or you've got some of your brackets or your variables mixed around. But again, coming back in here, if we go down to our draw aliens function, again, it is just one of these outer four loops inner for loop and then picking out the correct alien using our loop counting values as our indexes to get to our array. When we first designed our alien object, there was one other value we included in there. So if we look up to where we initialize our aliens, <clears throat> you'll see that there is this alive variable embedded within our alien object. And again, we were going to use that to say whether this particular alien was still alive or whether it had been shot. So we'll need to use that within our draw aliens function to make sure that if this particular alien that we're looking at is not alive, then we don't want to draw it. So let's have a think about how we can do that. So we have our if statement. We know then that this expression gives us the alien we're currently looking at and the alive variable will tell us that will be true if we need to draw this alien and false if we don't need to draw the alien. 
So by putting it in like that, so if it if alive is true, then we're going to draw the alien. And then we need to end our if statement. So that now gives us our complete draw aliens function. At the moment we're not yet using this alive, but obviously once we start building in our shooting aliens code, then that will come into its own and that will make sure that not that, that the aliens that are dead are not drawn on the screen. Well that gives us some aliens on the screen now. The next step is to make them move, but we'll be doing that in lesson number 15. So make sure you come out and make sure you save your code. So I've already saved mine as lesson number 14, so I can just type save. So make sure you do that. Um, if you haven't got it working yet, make sure you go through the code and get that, that initial drawing stage working fine. And then we'll pick this back up again in lesson number 15. So see you in the next lesson. Don't forget to visit the course pages for this project. There you'll be able to download the code for this lesson and get lots of extra hints and tips. You'll also get access to all my other programming, electronics and gaming projects. All the links are in the description below. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.